Okay, let's see if we can get you to understand parallel lines and transversals. And I'm going to try to uh, teach this in about 10 minutes or so. So uh, here you can see uh, this little uh, figure. We're seeing some lines and a transversal going on. So if you don't really kind of recognize this by its name, what a parallel parallel lines and transversals are, this is uh, uh, you know kind of representation of what we're going to be talking about. So we're going to get into that in a second. So this will be a quick kind of power review on the topic. But uh, before we get going, let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over the last many, many years, I've constructed several super comprehensive uh, math courses. I'm going to leave a link to my math program in the description of this video if you really want to see my full and complete instruction. Also, as a reminder, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I have hundreds and hundreds of math videos that can help you out. So again, if you like my uh, style of teaching, please uh, consider subscribing to my channel. And if this video helps you out, uh, definitely smash that like button. So let's go ahead and get into it. Parallel lines and transversals. So this is a topic that's um, uh, pretty much taught at the high school level uh, geometry course, right? So you're in high school, uh, typically, you know, after your uh, freshman year algebra course, this is in, gen in general, right? There's people who, who study this, um, students who study this in different times, but typically that's where you kind of first learn it. So if you're like in 10th grade, taking a geometry class and you're studying this, then that's, you know, about where everyone else, everyone else studies it. Okay. So, uh, but that being said, let's get into it. All right. So the first thing is just want to go ahead and do a quick review on, uh, some notation and, uh, um, some description of angles that are going on. All right, so we're talking about parallel lines and transversals. So here we have two lines that are parallel. So this line, we're calling this line L, and this line, this is line M, and they're parallel, right? So you should understand this concept of parallel. You got two lines that are basically never gonna cross, right? So the way we can indicate that in geometry is we could put a little arrow here on these two lines, okay, an arrow here and an arrow here. So that represents this. This notation uh, states that these two lines are parallel. Okay, um, you got to be very careful with uh, test questions, especially like let's say on the SAT, ACT, different types of tests. They try to trick you by giving you a figure, and st that looks like the lines are parallel. But unless it, they're explicitly um, stated as being parallel lines, you can't assume they're parallel. You got to look for that notation. So. This is one way to indicate that these two lines are parallel because if they're not, then the properties of these all these angle relationships uh, change. Okay, so so these are parallel lines. Another way we can indicate uh, line L is parallel to line M is just to say L is parallel to M. Okay, so you need to understand uh, this notation. All right, so now we're talking about this thing called a transversal, right? So it is uh, effectively a line that chops through two or more parallel lines or two more lines, period. So here we have a line that's trans, uh, uh, this transversal is just transiting or whatever you want to you know, think about it. You know, it's going through these two lines. So T, line T, is our transversal. So when you see this transversal, it's chopping through these uh, lines, these two parallel lines. Um, a lot of different angles are being formed. We've got angle one, two, we're just going to name them angle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the relationship between these angles here. Now, the first um, uh, sets of angles, and right, our angle relationship you really need to understand is vertical angles. So, like three and two, okay, these would be considered vertical angles. One and four, vertical angles, right? So, hopefully, you know what a vertical angle is. And if it looks, just by looking at the figure, these lines appear to be parallel, right? And they are, I mean, I drew them pretty parallel here. And if you look at one of four, two and three, these vertical angle uh, pairs appear to be equal to one another. And that is the case. So vertical angles are congruent, right? They are equal to one another. So need to know that if I wanna say, if I said angle one, what is 45 degrees, then angle four is also 45 degrees. And so we could use that notation as well, okay? All right, so vertical angles, and of course, vertical angles are everywhere. 
you know, if I just drew two lines like that, I got these are vertical angles, all right, and then these are vertical angles. All right, so, uh, and then of course you have five and eight here are vertical angles and seven and six are vertical angles. All right, so gotta know about angle relationships. And again, this is gonna be a quick power review. Hopefully this is, you know, um, stuff that you already know. Now, if you don't know this and you're trying to learn this for the first time, well, then you really gotta focus in on understanding these uh, angle relationships first. All right, so now let's talk about these types of angles. You're like, well, what is this mumbo jumbo I just wrote? Well, I'm gonna explain it to you. So AIA, SIA, and CA, okay? so. AIA uh, stands for alternate interior angles, right? SIA is same side interior angles, and then CA is corresponding angles. You should know what these are, okay? So we're gonna do a quick review uh, on what these are, then we'll look at one little example problem involving uh, parallel lines and transversals, and then we'll wrap this up. Okay, so alternate interior angles. So let's just look at this acronym interior angles and then they're alternate from one another so we're saying three and six angles three and six are uh, an alternate interior uh, angle okay there's also uh, four and five so let's just look at three and six all right so angle three and angle six so they're interior angles now what does that mean interior well they're kind of inside these two lines okay so here you would have exterior so these guys here in here are interior, okay? Um, I'm not gonna turn this into a full complete lesson on, there's even additional different types of angles. We're just gonna focus on these for now. So alternate interior angles, uh, three and six are inside these lines. So they're interior angles and they alternate um, across this transversal, all right? So angles three and angle six, alternate interior angles. And you can see angle four and five our alternate interior angles are on the opposite side. And what we need to uh, know is the relationship about alternate interior angles, okay? So, whoops, I got rid of my little six there. Okay, so if we just look, angle three and angle six, what do you think the relationship is, okay? Like in other words, you know, uh, do they appear to be equal maybe? Well, yes, they do, right? So alternate interior angles, or we're talking about when we're given parallel lines, or right? these are some of the theorems and uh, you know uh, things that you need you should be taking in your geometry class, right? To establish this is what we call a theorem, okay? Not a postulate. There's differences between postulates, theorems, corollaries, lemmas. There's all this kind of crazy <laughs> stuff going on in geometry, but as you well know, there's tons and tons and tons of theorems, definitions, etc. So there are theorems that says, hey. Uh, angles three and angle six, which are alternate interior angles, are congruent. In other words, they are equal. All right, so let's continue on. I don't want to make this video too long. And now uh, we have uh, same side interior angle. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory. So we're talking about those interior angles again. And let's see, angle three and five would be an example of same side interior angle. Okay, so here uh, interior angles, and then we have... Uh, angle three and angle five, same side of the transversal and their interior. And the um, relationship there may not be, they're clearly not the same angle, right? Because this is acute, this is obtuse. But the deal here is that these guys are supplementary. In other words, uh, angle three and five add up to 180 degrees, okay? So that's what you need to know. So same side interior angles are supplementary all right and if you don't know these theorems or these properties or these relationships you're not going to be able to do these uh parallel line and transversal problems and you need to know the nomenclature that goes along with it so angle four and six here are also same side interior angles and they are supplementary don't confuse those with complementary angles complementary angles add up to 90 Supplementary add up to 180. Okay, moving forward, we have uh, corresponding angles. So let's take a look at an example. You can see there's four pairs of these. So angle one and angle five are corresponding. So angle one and angle five are corresponding. Now, if you look, they, they're, that word corresponding is basically, hey, this kind of corresponds to this. 
Now let's look at and just try to guess the relationship, right? This is kind of sitting in the same position as this guy right here, angle one and angle five, and they appear to be the same angle, and you would be correct. Okay, so corresponding angles are congruent. So we have, you know, different pairs, three and seven. Okay, right here, this, okay, is congruent to this, is corresponding. And then, of course, you can say, okay, you got angle two, angle six, all right, uh, angle six and angle two, and then angle uh, eight and angle four, eight and four, you can kind of see there are corresponding and they are congruent. So here's the situation. When you have two lines in a transversal, there are angles uh, formed, but the two lines must be parallel. You need to have uh, absolute you know, validation that they are parallel. How, how do we do that? Well, you, uh, or how do we see that? You got to have either these arrows. They can also look like this. Okay, these arrows like this, um, or this kind of explicit uh, notation about the lines. Okay, but you got to have that. If you don't have that, then you can't assume that the lines are parallel, even if the lines do look parallel. Okay, so uh, so but when you do have uh, uh, two or more parallel lines, and there's a transversal cutting across, these angles are formed. Okay, and then obviously we went over the different um, relationships of these angles, alternate interior angles, same side interior angles, corresponding angles, and of course we always have vertical angles, okay? Vertical angles always happen irrespective of whether you have parallel lines going on uh, or not, okay? All right, so you have all these different angle relationships, and now we're just going to have to, you know, use our, our kind of knowledge to apply to solve uh, basic problems. So let's take a look at a problem like this. Um, and we'll wrap up this uh, video. So here we have two lines, L and M. They are parallel because I have my little arrows here. Okay, so I'm like, okay, good. They're parallel. And I have a question. It says, okay, here's an angle. It's 2x plus 20. And I'm trying to find out what x is, right? That's the, this variable expression represents this angle measure. And then I'm given this is angle 60. So how can I do that? Well, there's all kinds of different things you can do. I could be like, all right, this angle right here okay, is supplementary to this angle, 60, okay? Um, again, you can do all kinds of different ways. By the way, one of the things you need to know is that the angle of a line, okay, is always 180 degrees, okay, One, 180. So this is 60 here. This right here is 60. So this right here is 120, okay? All right, there's all kinds of different ways you can form this. So the angle... The total angle of a line, all right, a flat, a straight line, is going to be 180 degrees. So here's a vertical angle. This is 60. That's 60. Okay, so I know this is 120. Now let's just kind of, there's a lot of different ways I can go about doing this problem, okay? But the, uh, what I need to know is that this is 120. Now the corresponding angle here, these two angles are corresponding. So this is 120, okay? Do you understand what's going on? So this is 120. This is 120, and these two here are vertical angles, right? So that means that 2x plus 20 is the same as at 120 degrees. And now I can go ahead and solve for x, subtract 20 from both sides of the equation. Yes, unfortunately, there is algebra and geometry. Um, but don't worry about it. If you need help with any of this stuff, you can check out my math program or go back and uh, review your... Um, algebra math notes that you took so diligently when you were taking algebra, but I'm sure you don't have them. That's okay. I'm here to help. All right, so here we have uh, 2x equals 100. So we'll divide both sides of the equation by 2, so we get x is equal to 50, okay? All right, so that's how you would solve. This is a real basic type of uh, uh, problem, um, and there's all kinds of variations to this when we're dealing with parallel lines and transversals. But you don't need to make it any harder than it needs to be. You need to know some fundamental algebra, but most importantly, you need to understand these angle relationships so you can um, construct um, equations, right? You can equate one angle to another angle, and then you can just apply your awesome algebra skills to solve these equations without making any mistakes. Okay, so hopefully this video uh, was a good little review, uh, taught you something you need to know about parallel lines or transversals or just 
helped you strengthen your understanding of some things you already kind of knew about. But um, that's the whole point of these tutorials. So uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.